You see, the problem with Honda Fits, I can't hardly go to a gas station without somebody trying to make a rap video in front of this thing. Honda Fit. So when I first got my Fit, it would misfire a little bit on start, and when you come up to the first stop sign, it would die every time. This is a common problem with any of these higher mileage cars. Uh, the valves need to be adjusted, and they didn't really set an interval for them, and most people don't know that it still has adjustable valves. On the, all the older Hondas, um, they were adjustable, and the interval was every 60,000 miles. And this one never had one done till 209,000. So, it took that long for the problem to come up. What would happen is the valve seats were a little bit soft on these cars, and as the valve seat moved up into the head, it made the valve clearances tighter. So it actually keeps the valves open just a tiny bit to where the motor kind of has low compression. It wasn't that the valves were noisy. On some cars, that's what happens. They get noisy because they get loose from wear. These get tighter. So if you're having those type of problems, maybe this video is for you. First, we're going to go over what tools you're going to need. All right, you're going to need a couple of ratchets. I've got a 3 8 drive, quarter drive, half inch drive here. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket with a medium length extension, some other various extensions, a 12 millimeter socket, pliers for various vacuum connections. You got to click them, otherwise, they don't work. Flathead screwdriver to pull your cover off if you still got one. So we have some half inch extensions here, plus a 19 millimeter. We connect this all together, it needs to be about that big. This is what we're going to turn the crank over with to adjust the valves. Specialty tools. What I have here helps adjust the valves. You don't absolutely need this. What you do need is a 10 millimeter wrench and a flat blade screwdriver. This just combines them both into one to make it easier to work. You will need feeler gauges. I got these crappy Yes Welder ones off the Jungle Store. You need a 006 and a 010 to adjust your valves. So that's what you need. Oh, and don't forget, handy dandy muffin trays. I love these things. Fit those little barks, little sockets, make lots of rattling noise, love it. First, we're gonna pull the intake off. You have a little hose that attaches here attaches here on your stock air box right there. There's a little clamp there you'll need some pliers for. Mine, it fits tight enough, it doesn't need pliers. So we pop that off like that. Just get it a little bit loose. Slider off here, goes off, intake out. We're gonna take the cover off here. 10 millimeter there, two bolts. Trying to drop it like this. Into the muffin tray. Flat blade screwdriver. Quarter turn here. And this goes out of the way. All right, gets us to the intake manifold here. Various parts we have the intake manifold. We have the throttle body. We have the upper plenum. We have the lower plenum. All we need to do is take off the upper plenum and I also take off the throttle body because it has coolant running through it and trying to move all this stuff out of the way. It just uh, doesn't work. It's just easier to do it that way. You have a vacuum line connection right here. Clamp off, slide it off. Don't forget to hook that back up. You'll know pretty soon if you do. There's this little map sensor connector right here. Just push down on the end, pull it off. This wiring loom here actually has a little clip back behind here. You push it out, you can slide it off to the side and off of there, just like that. You can see it slid into there. Next up, we're gonna pull the throttle body. 
Throttle body has four 12 millimeter screws. First one's out there, second one right here. As you take that one out, this little bracket will come off right behind the throttle body. Go and drop it. Into the muffin tip. You have two more on the back side, same thing. This one, you gotta look kinda up in here. These wiring connections, you can leave them hooked up. Slide that one out. Bottom one. As it comes out, don't forget to grab your bracket back here. Because it will fall into the recesses of the motor and you will say many improper things. And there's our throttle body just hanging out there. Can just hang loose there. All right, now we're to the upper plenum. We have three bolts across the top, two nuts down there. One there. One here. One in the middle. Then you have this bracket piece that comes off. Probably doesn't fit in your muffin tent. Two nuts on the bottom. One there. One over here. Okay. Now you also have a bracket there. You can see. You can pull it out there if you choose. I just leave it with them with the animal fold for now. There's one more bolt back here. Socket in there and it comes right out. Uh, I guess I lost the video for that, but. It's right behind here. See where the throttle body is? It's straight down. 10 millimeter in your muffin tin. Plenum is loose. Just pick up with your bracket there. And here we go. There's your bracket. There's your bracket there. There's your plenum. All right, to the valve cover, hooray! Valve cover. You've got one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven bolts. Lucky number seven. The only other extra thing to do on this is that this bracket right here is uh, kind of in the way. So I'll take that sucker off or take it loose. However you feel about doing. You kind of got to have a short wrench or a bent wrench to get back around there. Then all that's loose. Then all these 10 millimeters for the valve cover. One, two, four. Pop this EGR connector off. Always be careful prying on these. They can get stiff and brittle over time. And uh, my valve cover and the grommets, these grommets here, they're kind of a pain to replace. Valve cover is loose, but we got one more connection here. We've got this vent hose here, slide it up, and I just wiggle it off as I wiggle off the valve cover. And there we go, we the inside of the motor. So now we take our two extensions here with a 19 millimeter on the end and a long ratchet. You don't even have to take off the front tire we're looking for is that hole right there. So we're gonna stick our socket through that hole. Feels so good. We're ready to turn this sucker over. Okay, we're just gonna let that rest right there. We're looking at this cam gear right here. We shed some light on it. Oh, we're almost there. See where it says up? That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna rotate this over until up is aligned with the rocker shaft right there. And that's when we can start our first adjustment. This is where you're gonna take your feeler gauges here. I have a 006 and a 010 out of the package here. Six is for the intake valve. Where it goes in, what you're gonna do is slide it in between the tip of that adjuster and the top of the valve. Just like that. See how it's sliding around in there? We just have a little bit of drag there. 
I just recently adjusted these valves, so they're pretty good, but I'm gonna show you the process anyways. This is a power belt, 648827. What it does is it has a uh, nut driver on the end that you move with this neat little thing here and a screwdriver to actually adjust the nut. This thing goes straight on here. You break the nut loose. So lefty loosey. You can see the screwdriver can adjust the nut, the um, screw in the center, and you can use this to tighten the nut. Neatest tool for Hondas ever. And after you've cinched that up, you double check your lash again. What you want is some drag there. Some people will say you want heavy drag. Some people say you want light drag, whatever. You want to feel resistance as you slide it in and out. Okay? And we got that, so we're good. That was on the intake side. 006 on the intake side. Then we move to the exhaust side with the 010 and do the same. And then tighten this nut. And then we double check. Sometimes they change after you tighten it. And then your valves will be tight. So you have two valves per intake and two valves per exhaust. And you're gonna do this for all four cylinders. The up on the cam is just for the first cylinder. It's not for any of the rest. We're gonna turn the cam over to get to the proper marks for those. Rotate it always clockwise. Never turn an engine backwards. Now this does not go in one, two, three, four order. That is not your firing order. So see the next one coming up is three. They start at where your crank pulley is or where your camshaft pulley is and then go over. Remember, there's two per cylinder. So we got one, two, three, and this is the one we'll adjust next. After you adjust three, rotate it again over, and here comes number four. Line up number four, okay. One, two, three, four. This is the one we're gonna adjust. Intake and exhaust. And we got one more to go. We did one, we did three, we did four. Now we're back to two. So one, two. So adjust number two, just like I showed you. After you did all this, your engine should run much smoother and happier. 14th take I've taken of this video. All of them get messed up somehow. Making videos is awesome. So that is how you do the valve adjustment on a 2000. 1 to 2012 Honda Jazz or Honda Fit. If uh, you like what you see here, it's helped you out. Uh, make sure and like and subscribe. Hit the little thingy and the thingy. And um, you'll see lots more uh, DIY for the Fit and racing action because we're doing all this DIY for a purpose. Remember, hear it outside, inside, outside racing. Uh, something about an apex. What was it? Uh, uh, being late? Uh, I don't know.